Basingstoke Town manager sacked, Totten tried to go top, and were the bison buzzing against the bees? Hello and welcome to Sports Week, I'm Lee Jarvis. Here on Sports Week we're now joined by Basingstoke's new manager Jason Bristow. Jason, congratulations on your Thank appointment. You um, what did you make of the departure of Frank Gray? It's, it's obviously very sad when, when any manager leaves the club. Um, obviously we were set, we, we've got a game Saturday, we've got a game Monday and six points out of those and it will put us back in the picture but we will be taking it game by game and, and, and restore the faith in the fans and, and hopefully ultimately make the job mine. Jason, thank you very much and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Without a win in the last three league games, AFC Ton hosted Throne Town on Saturday, looking to keep the pressure on Brackley Town in top spot. And in an uneventful first half, it was Frome who took the lead. Matt Smith's volley was well saved by Tottenham keeper James Bittner, but Luke Ballinger reacted sharply to head home and put Frome 1-0 up. Totten almost equalised, but Mike Gosney's free kick was tipped on the post. It's been three or four games now, you know, uh, especially here. I mean, teams have, have come here twice now in a, in a week and set up and try to you know, make it hard for us. And uh, we have to deal with that. I thought we had, we had good, good areas of pitch today, wide areas. We had a chance to get good ball in and we didn't do that. And uh, that's the disappointing part. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Sports Week here from the Weymouth and Portland Sailing Academy. We're going to take a look at how Weymouth are preparing for the 2012 Olympics and also have our usual weekend's action. 121 days until the start of the Olympics and 157 days until the start of the Paralympics, one venue that has slipped under the media's radar is Weymouth in Portland. The home of sailing during the summer's games, Weymouth and Portland will host 13 events here at the Sailing Academy. The general site and the infrastructure in the building, everything is complete, it's all here. Um, obviously when local come in, they will be changing things. They've actually been in a lot over the last Increasingly excited um, about the Olympics coming to this small town and the effect it's going to leave um, you know, for us regarding benefit and legacy. Some of those hoping to be involved in July are already descending on Weymouth to get a taste of the unique conditions the waves here have to offer. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. In all five, uh, the first three I thought we played exceptionally and the last two wins were close. Um, so I anticipate a, a close, hard-fought game and you know, hopefully we can get the edge and, and, and make it six. Thank you. Well, it's been a mixed season for the teams that we've followed this year. One promotion, two sides in the playoffs and a couple of mid-table finishes. We're going to start with football. Aaron, you watched Winchester City this, this season. What did you make of that? Well, it's yeah. been a fantastic season for the Citizens. Uh, promotion, League Championship glory, into the Southern two, two, uh, League Division three. 1. Five defeats all season. Winchester you couldn't write, uh, written a better script for them. Of the whole Moving on to Henry, Basingstoke Town, you looked at them this season as well. What did you make of, of their yeah. season? It's been um, an up and down season for Basingstoke with uh, yeah, a few good wins, but overall fairly disappointing, I'd say. They've uh, turned it around with a, a change in manager, kind of coming in the second part of the season. That's a bison, obviously sad that... Uh, Steve Moria has left the uh, has left the club, but exciting times for Basingstoke now to Definitely. try and push on. Yeah, it's it's going to be a new team, and from the signings they've got, and with Kurt Reynolds as new captain, I really think that they'll be really pushing the top of the uh, top of the league next year. Well, that's all for sport. Back to the studio. After having their last match postponed against Haven at Waterlooville, Basingstoke Town have played fewer games than any team around them in the Blue Square South coming into this fixture with Salisbury City. They failed to deal with a long throw into their box and Delano Sam York smashed his shot into the back of the net. This is eighth goal in the league. Right. Top scorer Sam York shown his strength to get his and Basingstoke second, much to the jubilation of a vocal crowd. With Bromley currently in a relegation dogfight, Basingstoke Town knew they'd be in for a hard game on Saturday. And it was Basingstoke who started brighter, Delano Sam York missed time in this header. And it was the Dragons who continued to create the better chances. Tim Sills denied by an acrobatic save from Joe Welch. But Jason Bristow's side held on for the three points and are now nine points off the playoffs. 
Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. Winchester extended their lead at the top of the Wessex League with a 3-1 win over Bournemouth Poppies. This win gives them a six-point lead over second place Burmton Heath Harlequins. Winchester now have a goal difference of plus 70 and 72 points on the board. And in the Blue Square South, Basingstoke failed to move up the table. With Matthew Warner's cross was headed home at the near post by Sam York. Basingstoke taking a deserving lead. <laughs> The Dragons increased their lead as Sean McCauley broke with the ball and luckily found Sam York, whose first time cross was put into the back of the net by McCauley. Sam York involved in all three goals. Basingstoke's confidence sky high at this point. Once the place selling the food has been given their rating, they will be given a certificate and window sticker like this one here to display in their front window if they want to. Uncollected bins. A familiar sight in Winchester recently, despite being only two weeks into a new waste services contract with Biffa, hoping to save £2 million. 500 Winchester residents have complained to Winchester City Council as their bins have been left for weeks. It's awful really, we had a couple of collections to start off with and then it just turned to nothing. It's just mounting up in our house now because there's nowhere to put it outside. I've contacted um, the council a couple of times and they've not responded and don't really seem to care about anything. It's our business now to make sure our contractors deal with the backlog and collect on the prescribed days promptly. It'll take a little while to get organised, but it's a very efficient means of collecting rubbish. And I'd like to take the opportunity to apologise to residents who've been inconvenienced by, by not having their bins emptied at the, at the prepared time. With the backlog of rubbish expected to take to the end of this week to clear, residents can expect the service to be back to normal at the beginning of next week. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. 27,325 people like these at Winchester Job Club, are now unemployed in Hampshire. But is Hampshire County Council doing enough to reduce this number? What we're trying to do is to uh, give uh, apprenticeships to around 100 young people in Hampshire. 30% of under 25s are currently unemployed in Hampshire. 5,643 people are unemployed in Southampton. 1,604 people in Eastleigh, while 945 people are unemployed in Winchester. Hampshire County Council has received a government grant of £7.8 million to be spent on developing and expanding primary schools. The grant was given to 100 councils across the country to ease the demand for school places in counties with the highest school capacities. It's always good news to, to get extra money out of the government. We know that economic conditions are, are very tight, but Hampshire has now got an additional seven, nearly eight million pounds. The council will now spend the next few months deciding where the money will be best spent. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. Winchester City Council is set to increase parking fees in all of the car parks in the centre of Winchester starting next year. The price changes vary depending on the car park and length of stay, but the majority of prices will go up between 10 and 20p, leaving car park users frustrated. Why increase prices if they're trying to encourage people to use it? And if I was cynical, I would think that the council don't want the car parks, the smaller ones, to be used because they'd be very useful to sell off and make money that way. Winchester City Council has adopted a new hygiene rating system which will rate the hygiene of restaurants, pubs, supermarkets and takeaways kitchens like this one on a scale of 0 to 5. 0 meaning that major improvement is needed and 5 being very good. The scheme will replace the old safe to eat system used by the council. The council feel that the new system will have more significance than the old one. Winchester will benefit because the customers and the businesses know they're getting the same system that uh, is applied nationally. This way at least the public are going to see one scheme across the country, it means the same, 
they can make a decision.